Okay, hello guys, sorry about that. Can you all hear us properly? Um, sound better apparently, echo's gone. Oh, they testing, can testing. Echo. Good. testing. Right. Let's, let's start Check. that again. Everyone pretend the past few minutes didn't happen. Thank you very much again, Jared. <laughs> um, right, so let's do this. Uh, tonight we have a flat earth debate between the um, flat out hero killing uh, MC Toon um, because he pretty much hasn't done anything since Flat Out Hero destroyed his channel. Uh, and we also have Russian Vids, which is always good for a laugh. Um, and Reds huh. is here to moderate. How you doing, Reds? How's it going? Yay. Right, so let's, okay. I suppose we should just get this started. Reds is going to look after the, the, the debate, make sure you guys don't get too heated. Um, I'm going to sit and um, look after the chat. So let me just make sure... MC Toon is on the screen. There we go. And why don't you guys just do what you need to do? Start debating. Yeah, right. let me start off here, McToon. I just want to say uh, I did take a uh, peek at your channel and I and I uh, listened into uh, your conversation with Ali B. And I thought that was a good conversation, even though um, Ali B is a flat earther. Him and I, we've talked. We don't agree on everything, like such as the moon landing. We have everybody's an individual not everybody's in agreeing everything and that's how it should be you know people even ball earthers you know uh, unfortunately it shouldn't be every single ball earther believes <laughs> every every single aspect that they're being spoon-fed by mainstream science so i just think everybody yeah. should be thank uh, you an individual yeah was yeah, that, Ali, who, Ali he's a nice guy i really liked uh, talking with him yeah you know, yeah so yeah, I, I think we can have a civil conversation i think you're a reasonable guy um you know you know, I, I, I always treat people the way they treat me. I'm like a mirror. You know, that's how it is. If I'm a jerk, well, people got to look at themselves type of thing, you know. So as long as people don't come at me sideways, we're all good and we can have a discussion and it can get a little heated. But as long as it doesn't go too far, it's all it's all good, you know. All right. So one thing I want to mention, first off, like I told uh, Fight the Flat Earth Craig, I have um, some clips that I want to show, but. One thing I want to touch upon is um, the sun and the distance of supposedly 93 million miles away. And as we all know, it's it's over the years, the centuries, it's changed dramatically. Uh, the distance, you know, from 10 million miles to 50, to now it's supposedly 93 million miles away. And supposedly all this is happening in deep space and supposedly sun has its own atmosphere. And supposedly science knows this. Um, without, you know, <laughs> with the sun being 93 million miles away. What I'm getting at is, you know, you look at Earth and supposedly the, the ball Earth uh, model. And I live, for example, in San Francisco, where we don't get snow at all, but not too far away. And it's, for example, Reno, Tahoe, it snows, you know. So for the sun to be 93 million miles away and to get snow in relatively very close distance, and compared to 93 million miles away, uh, for this insignificant difference, you know, a few hundred miles away to 93 million miles away, I just find it absurd with the sun being that far away. So, well, I just want to um, yeah, that's a good question. So, there, there's a, obviously an awful lot of weather going on, there's a lot to do with elevation. Um, and I would think it would be a lot more drastic if it were close. If you talk about the percentage difference between the sun, if it's 93 million miles away versus 3,000 miles away, if you move your elevation up by, you know, a couple thousand feet, you're a much larger percentage closer than if you're 93 mile, million miles away. But it's not just that. There's a whole lot to it. When you're in San Francisco, you're right off the water, and that moderates everything. Uh, just like where Craig is in is in England, they don't get much snow, and they're farther north than Minnesota. I'm in Minnesota; we get a ton of snow. We had 30 degrees below zero this this winter, and uh, Craig, uh, I would imagine, didn't have anything of the sort. Yeah, it was farther north. It's yeah. the water makes a huge, huge difference. So, um, comparing, you know, just off the the ocean to Tahoe, which is high elevation and not near the ocean huge difference in in uh, geography yeah mick i just want to uh emphasize yeah i i do understand the water for example i'm i'm in a basically my exact location i'm in a microclimate i mean just you know basically over the freeway 
there's a there's a major difference in, because of the of the bay, and I, I'm like a zone ten A, where it's basically a uh, tropical to subtropical. You can grow, you know, say mangoes, avocados, things like this. But here's the thing: is you go a little bit further south, uh, say for example San Jose, you know, it still doesn't snow. You go even further south, or, or north even. Let's say go go north, it doesn't snow. Uh, going north past um, the the bay itself. But here's the thing: is you know, um, you talk about elevation with, uh, uh, you know, say you know Reno compared to the Bay Area. Here's the thing: is too, when you go to Phoenix. The valley of the sun in wintertime, it gets down to 26 degrees. It actually snowed uh, just north of Phoenix, uh, Mesa, uh, Superstition Mountains. There's, you know, snow, you know, covered. So here's the thing is you get low elevation, it's snowing. You get high elevation, it's snowing. So that's really contradictory. With uh, the, this, I, I, I don't see what this has to do with the shape of the earth. This is this it, is basic it weather does. and geography stuff. No, it, McToon, it does because this revol this all uh it's all about the lie of the sun being very large and very far away for example well hold on hold on i want to mention this as well it actually as you know you should know it actually supposedly or does snow on the equator it has snowed in the equator uh in the, uh, uh mount mount kenya in, in kenya so you know a lot of things are happening that tells me that the sun is not 93 million miles away. Um, so uh, could you please yeah. quantify how the difference would be if it were close? Why would, why would being close make a difference and have it not snow when the sun is close? Well, again, you know, again, the relative short distance, for example, let's say, let's say Placerville. Or no, Sacramento. No, we're talking about, we're talking about, let's talk about the, the mountain in, in Kenya there. Yeah, we'll get to that, but I want to finish off what I was just saying. For example, Sacramento, even closer to Reno, or Placerville, 100 miles away, no snow to no snow. Uh, so you, you already went through that. What do you expect different? What well, I expect what, is what right. Yeah, what, what I would expect is, uh, you know, for 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 the sun to be uh, shining on this side of uh, this ball Earth, this minute difference from 90 million miles away. We shouldn't have snow to no snow in such a, a close proximity. That's my point. Right, can, can you quantify that, please? Yeah. Well, I what just, numbers are you I running to expect you. that there's some difference? Well, I, I would expect, for example, maybe Minnesota and, and farther north. Yeah, snow. But such a, a relatively short distance with the sun that's so far away, it, it, it shouldn't have that shouldn't happen. That tells me there's a local sun that's cruising around. That for example, no, here, let me, I, I let me explain this. Let me explain this. nothing about local versus distant that that would make let, let any difference. Let me explain this. Because I asked you to quantify, and you haven't quantified. You're going around in circles and not quantifying it. Please quantify the difference. Well, I already told you. The, the difference is, if this is supposedly a sun that's 93 million miles away, there shouldn't be uh, this minute difference from, for example, again, Reno to, say, Sacramento, even closer to San Francisco, of course. There shouldn't be snow to no snow. Th that's quantifying it right there. What else do you want? I'm not sure exactly what you want me to quantify. Here's something else I want to mention real quick as far as uh, if you pay attention to the USDA plant zone. For example, is zone, for example, zone 10A, uh, San Diego, uh, areas of LA, San Luis Obispo, the Bay Area. And if you go all the way up north to Oregon, for example, you can grow avocado trees uh, in Oregon. But when you go on the other side, for example, on the East Coast, you can't do that when you get to, for example, north of, of Florida, into Georgia, South Carolina. So, you know, I understand there's supposed to be a tilt to the so, earth. Yeah, so th this is all about geography and local weather. It has nothing to do with with uh, directly with the, the, the proximity well, of the sun. absolutely it does. So... so so no, and you I, haven't quantified the difference yet. You said you did, but you that actually didn't. Well, so okay, let, let me try. Let me try to reword. Hang on, it. hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. McTinn wasn't done yet. Let him finish, please. Go don't ahead, over talk ahead. each other. Go ahead. McTinn, so, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't see the difference. I've asked for quantification somehow. How you think that you've already uh, you acknowledged that being next to the water makes a huge difference versus being inland. So. 
but then you keep comparing next to the water to inland. Stop comparing next to water to inland. We've already decided that that is a huge difference because of the water. So compare, for example, Idaho to Minnesota. That makes sense. They're both inland. Yeah, but like I said, talking about Oregon, you know, going up north where the, you know, next zone to the water. Be- well, well, inland too. So inland too, as far as, but for example, you can go down to Arizona again. You can go to Arizona and you have zones 9A, zones 8A. You know, you, you get into the sevens and it's closer to the equator. That's the point. I, I don't think I, I, you know. I'm not seeing any anything okay. that you're. Not you know what? Maybe you need a visual. Of, maybe you need a visual of what I'm speaking on. Let's move on because you're not grasping what I'm telling you, and that's fine. We'll move on to something else because you 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 you're not really getting my point. I think if you had a visual map of like, for example, for example, you could be in Phoenix, and uh, you could be northern Phoenix, and it's zone nine B. You can go a little bit south of Phoenix, for example, in Chandler and Gilbert. It's it goes down to A where it's a lower zone, a lower plant zone in the USDA map. If yeah, you took and, a look you at you go farther understand. north, the numbers change like that. That's no, per, that's go south. I just said if you go south, closer to the equator. All right, and what's the percentage difference in closest to the equator from? I, again, from I just I just it's, said. It's, it's, it's pretty small. No, you didn't tell me the percentage difference. It's a pretty I, I small percentage. percentage difference. No, McToon, right. I said it goes, from, it goes from 9B to 9A, okay? That's from, for example, down to 25 to 20 degrees, you know, and relatively that's, that's life and death for plants. This is very important if you're going to be growing any type of, uh, type of trees or t- any type of agriculture. You need to know this. You know, sure. farmers need to know this information, very vital information for, for anybody that deals with a- agriculture. So I don't think we're getting anywhere with this. I don't think you're, you're, you're grasping what I'm saying. Um, that's fine. But again, uh, you know, I find it very interesting. I'll move away from the United States. I'll just touch upon again, Kenya, even where it snowed in Cairo, Egypt, which is on the 30th parallel. All right. So, I thought we were moving on. Yeah. But I just want to throw that in there before we do right, move, move on. on. Let's hey, get to the I images. have for you. Yeah. Yeah. I got something for you. Craig, uh, could you bring up 10, please? Um, we're going to talk, I'll just touch briefly on, on, uh, on perspective, perspective gets thrown around a lot. So I'm going to say that perspective is uniform reduction in size with distance is, is, is what perspective is. We have a, we can calculate perspective. There's no, there's, it's not magic fairy dust. We can't just sprinkle it on whenever we want. Right. Yeah. So um, Craig, I don't know if you're getting it yet, but uh, the, the formula, there's two, there's two ways to calculate it. Um, one is simple triangulation that we can use if we know um, the right, uh, if we can create a right angle, a right triangle. Uh, so for example, if you're looking at the, the um, elevation of the sun above the horizon or elevation of a building above the horizon, right? So if you're, if you're um, 100 feet away from a building and you know that building is 100 feet tall, well, we can predict accurately every time that that building is, uh, that the angle there on the ground is gonna be 45 degrees. You double your distance, you can calculate again that angular elevation, right? So uh, if we don't know those things, then we can the uh, we can calculate perspective using. Um, Sorry, which number was it you wanted? Uh, oh, point. number ten, please. Number, number ten. 10. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, just do that and, and I'll uh, share it to you. People have heard this before. The uh, we can calculate the angular size of something as it gets farther away too. Arc tangent, G, um, G, uh, uh, okay. uh, here, when he gets it up, um, I'm just G over sure two all over know. R is how I do it. So I have a video where I, I derived the formula and I come up with just a, the notation slightly different than how, um, M- McToon. Yes. Alpha equals two times the arc tangent of G over two R. Yes. And, and in, in the image, he had just had it up for a second, G over two all over R. That was because of how I derived it. So it doesn't matter. The, the point is we can calculate perspective. Perspective um, means things get uniformly smaller in size as they get farther away in distance. So um, okay. I'm going to right. go to 12. 12. So can you see the that earth now? is flat. Am I, am I sharing uh, it to you? 
So, oh, um, number 12 you wanted, sorry. Yes, please. Uh, number 12. Okay. That one. So, yep, there you go. So, um, if the Earth is flat, I'll assume that the Earth is flat um, for this, and the sun uh, revolves around at some certain elevation. Um, typically, now you can use whatever number you want, but we'll go with the typical one, 3,000 miles elevation. Um, I don't claim that. So, all right, what what number do you pr prefer? How can you, how can we uh, gather this, you know? We, Triangulation. We triangulation yeah, yeah we, we can't get accurate you know there's no there's no way to get oh, that, that is absolutely wrong so if we're at a building and we can walk 200 yards away from a building and we can measure the angle up to the top of the building and we know we're 200 yards away from that building right then we we know how high it is okay it's simple triangulation is absolutely simple and it works every time you find a case where it doesn't work and we can talk about it, but at, triangulation works. And when you triangulate multiple times, um, then you get confirmation of it. So we'll take a number, just make up one because that's all that happened when Samuel Robotham made up the numbers, uh, but we'll go with 3000 miles, right? But it doesn't matter if it's a fixed number, if it's a certain fixed number above the, uh, above the earth, we can apply the numbers to it. You can try every number you want between um, Mr. Idiot's 40 miles high and, um, you, you know. Who said this is 40 miles high? Oh, Mr. Idiot. I, I call him by his surname. Why, Why you, you are, are an, an idiot. idiot. My God. Um, I, you know, I get a headache when you just mention that name. Yeah, I'm that's sorry. Some next level <laughs> um, on that guy, I've honestly. seen 1,000. I've seen 3,000. I've seen 5,000. I, I haven't seen more than 5,000, um, but it doesn't matter. These numbers you can run for any of those and, and the result will only be slightly different, right? So we'll take 3000 miles high and we have this, uh, the map here that you're looking at. Um, uh, Puerto Williams, Chile is the farthest South city of the world other than in Antarctica. So I'm using the, uh, intentionally using the numbers that are the most flat earth friendly. Right. Well, it doesn't represent uh, me. I want, to, I want to make that clear, McDoon. It doesn't represent me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it's three, 3,000 miles high. So oh, I don't, it, it doesn't matter. Man. We can, we if we're having a debate, you shouldn't straw man me. And, and, hang on, hang on, hang on. Stop, 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 yeah. stop, 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 stop. Hang on. McToon did not straw man you. All right. What he said is that regardless what number you put in here, his point will still stand. He didn't assume what your number was. In fact, I even okay. think he accepted that you don't have an exact value or you didn't give it an exact value in this debate. Well, let's be clear about this. You know, again, we're all, you know, a lot of flat earthers dis disagree on how high the sun is. And that's so, fine. That's why McTune framed it in the way that he did. Okay. So please let him. That's fine. But I just, I just want to be clear about this, that it, I'm not saying it's 3,000 miles. That's fine. I, let, you can carry on. just want to mention that okay. real quick. So if it's 3,000 and it's flat, <clears throat> then on the day of the southern equinox, or sorry, the day of the southern solstice, um, the sun in the middle of the night is the absolute farthest away that it can ever be from Puerto Williams, Chile. And uh, 17,861 miles. We know that because we know how far it is between each of the degrees of latitude. We can just run the math. It's not hard, right? So the sun is somewhere over Australia in the middle of the night for Puerto Williams, Chile, right? We can run the math. Triangulation works every time. 9.51 degrees. That's how high above the horizon the sun would be in the middle of the night. Now, if you want to say that it's higher, then it's going to be, if the sun is higher, then the, the elevation is higher above. If it's lower, say 2,000 miles, it's going to be lower, but it's not going to be zero in the middle of the night ever. So how can the sun set if at no point does it get low enough? Russian? I, I, I don't hear McToon anymore. I see his mouth moving. I don't hear him. I don't uh, know what happened. Oh, well, could you just refresh your browser then? Because everyone else seems okay. to be fine. Hold on, hold on, guys. Yeah, I don't know what is going on here. 
Hold on. <sighs> I mean, is it like a tactic of his, or I'm not sure. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Man. So, so what was the last thing you heard? Okay, McTuna, try again. I don't know if I can hear you or not. Let's see. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you fine now. Okay, right, go ahead. What was the last thing you heard? Uh, I would say it was 15 seconds, and then you got cut off. You're talking about Chile and just uh, got cut off. Okay. Well, if if we run the math for 3,000 yeah, miles. Just, just, uh, go, just try to re- I was. I did. If we run the math for 3,000 miles, then it, the sun will be in the middle of the night, 9.51 degrees above the horizon. Now, this is the most extreme case. Everywhere else in the world – everywhere else in the world the sun will be at a higher elevation in the middle of the night okay so this is impossible it is utterly impossible for the sun to set now don't say perspective unless you're going to apply the formula that we already went over and you accept it as the correct formula why is it that we can see the sunset if the earth is flat and i i said this many times and i have actually have a video it is perspective but i do have a video on my channel of uh, these people out out in sea, and the, the it appears the sun is is the going formula. dipping. Hold on, I'm trying to speak here. It, it dipping below the horizon, they zoom in and you see the full sun well above the horizon by zooming in with a P900 digital camera, and I have that on my channel. Um, so there you go. I mean, there's other examples of that as well. Um, no, but the bo- but sorry. the bottom line. But the bottom was line it, is this: was the, was the sun more than nine and a half degrees above the horizon when they zoomed in on it? I don't have those numbers. And was it in the middle of the night? Because as I said, in the middle of the night, in the most extreme case for flat Earth, most prop, best, best, best case for flat Earth, nine and a half degrees above the horizon in the middle of the night, right? How, how can that happen? Perspective doesn't do it because I just calculated perspective. That is the exact thing that I calculated. So your picture, your video, I saw had no solar filter on it, right? So the sun set because it got small and the glare got small. It didn't actually set. What happened is it got small on the horizon. Now, I'm not talking about just after sunset. I'm talking middle of the night. So please explain to me how the sun can set in the middle, of, if it's in the middle of the night, it has to be nine and a half degrees above the horizon. Um, I did not see this myself. I'm just taking your word. This is happening, and uh, to me, what it comes down to it, um, I'm just take. I got to take your word on it. This is happening, and it needs to be demonstrated for everybody. So you can Wait, have I, your. Hold on. I mean, it's me... demonstrated every night when the sun sets. Okay, you. you why are you talking about Chile uh, in Australia? Seven and- billion people every day see the sunset. I'm saying if we just do simple triangulation, the sun cannot set. Okay, you're talking. I'm sorry. Okay, you're talking about a, a standard normal sunset. I thought you were just giving the equation on uh, what you're showing here on the uh, the screen. I, I wasn't quite sure what you're getting at. Okay, like I said, it's it's due to it's due to perspective. This is a vast flat Earth, and when the sun's circling above. The flat earth due to perspective and that's where i want craig to do here if you can play hold on, my hold on. we yeah. already went over perspective perspective is uniform reduction in size with distance it's not uniformly reducing in size with distance it's disappearing behind the horizon and it's not changing in size at the same time so don't say perspective because we already covered that it cannot be perspective i calculated perspective how does the sun set? Uh, it, no, it is. You, you can make all the calculations you want. I'm claiming, I, I'm dismissing what you're saying, and I'm saying it's perspective. Just because you deny it, it doesn't mean it's reality. Dust. It's just magic fairy dust. It's whatever I want it to be. Okay. I'm sorry. Perspective Break, isn't Break, whatever Break, you want it to be. And stop, yeah. stop, stop, stop. We're over talking each other. I'm yeah. going to bring it back on point with one question. Russian, please define in your own words what is perspective. It's simple. It's perspective is from your perspective, from your vantage point on ground level, for example, you you looking at the horizon and what objects are doing. For example, Craig, if you can please go to five seconds, six seconds into the video clip that I sent you. 
and, and show this. Are you, see, are you uh, seeing please it? Please display uh, this. And then after that, go um, uh, 10 seconds in right after, please. Right. So go to six and go to say. Uh, are you guys six seconds are you guys in? seeing this on your side? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, let me go back there. Right. Uh, so that's six seconds. Where okay. We there we go. Just want to hold there for a second. Of yep. course, the close. All these telephone poles are the same height. They're all the same height. The reason you see the one closest look taller is due to perspective, and the ones that appear to be losing its legs as you go down the line look shorter. It's perspective. Now, if you go eight seconds in, please, Craig. Yeah, eight seconds in. One sec. That's eight seconds. Okay, go ten. I'm sorry, go ten. Maybe a little bit more. I apologize. It'll be the next slide over. Just keep keep st strolling. Yeah, that should do it right there. Why, I don't know why it's not changing. Oh, oh, sorry, it doesn't didn't seem to do it when I. No, you went too far. There you go. There you go. Right there. So I I just um, mimicked with uh, Photoshop. Um, basically what the sun, why the sun appears to be setting, just like the top of each of these telephone poles appear to get lower and lower. When we look at the sun, yeah, right there. When you look at the sun from your, due to perspective, from your vantage point, the, it appears to be going down when there, when it's not, it's just due to perspective. It appears to be getting, uh, it, it appears to be getting lower and lower when it's all the same height. You yeah, that is me. exactly right. You're exactly right. And that can be calculated. Those phone poles are, what, 40 feet tall? Right? Not 3,000 miles, not 40 miles, right? Again, they're, yeah, they're, I understand. It. So no, we can worry. calculate the angular size and the angular yeah. elevation above the horizon for each of those telephone poles. And every one of those will match the triangulation formula that I use for the, the example in Chile, right? Everyone will match the same formula for how far above the horizon they're supposed to be. We can calculate this. When the sun is 3,000 miles up or 1,000 miles up, it doesn't get close to the ground. It doesn't get close to the vanishing point. It stays well, many degrees above the vanishing point. We can calculate that. I did. So you have my example saying it's nine and a half degrees above the horizon, and you're just ignoring it. Um, I'm I'm ignoring it because I, I I'm not I'm not buying what you're saying. Your reasoning I'm not I'm not buying it. Period. So what I'm telling you is, but then you whatever, came back with the exact same reasoning. Um, what I'm telling you is this: whatever the sun is, three thousand, five thousand, six thousand, whatever's happening during the day, you know, we get the sun half the day, uh, however many hours it's making its circular motion above the flat Earth. You know, this is basically what's happening. We are, when you see the sun rise and the sunset is due to perspective on both ends. You know, the highest point and the lowest point. And, and, and I totally agree that perspective plays a part and we can calculate perspective. And you have not, you've just dismissed it because you don't like the answer. Perspective. No, I, don't like the answer. I just don't agree with it. Oh, what, I'm, what I'm getting at too, the most important thing about about a flat earth is water. It must be, con must be contained to okay. find its level. You would so, you like to change the topic and concede this point? No, I, I'm not conceding right, this. So, so forget the water. Stick with this current topic, please. No, we'll get to water. But I'm just telling you, I'm telling you, and, and, and you know, uh, that's one thing I've always stated is, is the most important factor is water of being level. All right, so the water. A lot of hang, on, water. hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, no, we can't jump topics here. Going from perspective to level water let's stick with the law perspective and the sun until this topic is concluded then we can move on to water being yeah. level but I, that's the thing is reg i made my point i'm sticking by it i disagree with mctoon's uh, uh his perspective on what's happening and i'm i'm not considering anything i'm telling you this is what's happening it's, it's so can, it's you, flatly... can you can you apply your formula then the angular perspective formula or just do simple triangulation to, to get the output that you see over flat Earth. Well, here's the thing is, McToon, is I don't know the exact distance of the sun. So it's like well, me let's saying... Just, let's just well, pick a on. number. Okay, well, I don't want to do that because, for example, the bogus 93 million miles away sun 
and no, I come no, back and tell you, hold on, hold on, let me finish. This Can I finish my sentence, please? Just let, 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 I'm not going to be that long. I just want to give you my my perspective on this. How can I tell you, look, McToon, I don't agree uh, with this with the calculation of the sun being 93 million miles away because we cannot measure it. Then I tell you, oh, I can tell you how far the sun is on the flat Earth. I don't know, but I do know water remains level. It needs it needs to be it needs to be contained to find its level. That's moving on from perspective. We already covered it. Moving on to water being level it needs to be contained to find its level. Not, not so, until not until McTune can actually respond. So we will yeah. then no then worries. we'll finish we'll finish off with him responding and then we'll move yeah. on to water being level. So McTune, floor is yours. Sure. Um. Well. So it, it seems that that uh, the math is uh, maybe a little past you. Um, it is simple triangulation. No, it's not well, past me. Eighth, eighth grade math. So um, if it's a certain fixed distance above a flat earth, we can calculate its expected angle. This is not hard to do. You agreed to the formula. Um, perspective isn't magic fairy dust. We can apply it. We can use numbers. And we can find out what it is for real. You're, you're basing things on assumption. Assumptions, for example. What, what assumption? You're, you're assuming that, nine, that the sun is 93 million miles away. Can you? No, no, that? I'm assuming the sun is 3,000 miles high. I know that's, that you're, you're trying to use an argument, but like I said, that that's as, I'm not saying you're using this as a straw man towards me, but I don't, I don't, uh, uh, I'm not, um, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying, I don't know. I don't know how far. I know it's not 93 million miles away. I, I believe it's much closer. So how far? If it's, I don't if know. It's I don't have a measure stick. Above a flat earth, the problem is. It can never set. Doesn't matter. You pick whatever number you want. You can run every number between 40 miles and 100,000 miles. It will never set. Says you. Let me Says, ask you this. No, no. Says the law of perspective. Not me. This isn't mine. This is just how things work. We can no, go no. and we can stand in a hallway. We can stand in a tunnel and we can calculate how high the tunnel will be or how high the the ceiling tile will be that's 20, 20 feet down, 100 feet down. We can we can calculate these things. This isn't hard. Like I said, this is eighth grade math. And you're just ignoring it because it doesn't fit your, 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 math. your outcome. No, no. You, you say it's eighth, eighth grade math, but we have to understand, too, again, we don't know the exact distance of the sun. The and I'm they saying say, it doesn't matter. Pick any. Well, any how about distance. this? You know, for example, according to science, the, 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 the distance of the moon well, fluctuates. Are you about to change topics? No, I'm not. I'm just giving an example. I'm not changing subjects. I'm just giving an example. According to science, the, the moon is constantly changing uh, its distance. It's, they get, when they give us uh, whatever calculations they give us in science, you know, that that's just the average because it's, it fluctuates. That's a great one for the next topic. All right. So we're, we're going to move, move on to, I guess, the water being level thing. So Russian vids, what is your point to be made about the, about large bodies of water? Go. Yeah, large bodies of water and <laughs> small bodies, large bodies, medium-sized bodies, they always seek a level. That simple. And, uh, for example, uh, Craig, if you can go to, say, 27 seconds in. Yeah, bear with me, and I'll get that display back for you. Thank you. Um, screen share. Twenty-seven seven, twenty-seven seconds. There we yeah, go. that we were on. <clears throat> Is that right? Can you see that? Uh, not yet. I see you trying to share it Ooh. over McToon, but I don't see it being shared. Let me see here. Let me go to the Hangout. No, I don't see it there. And, and uh, just for clarity, it's right there. MC Toon, like MC Hammer. Uh, can you see it now? Yeah, I, I see it. I see it. Yeah. Um, MC Hammer. Okay. Yeah, this is the thing is, again, you know, <laughs> perspective, you know, they say, oh, ships, you know, they, uh, you know, they sail uh, around the ball of the earth, the ball of earth, you know, but again, I mentioned this before, you look left to right. Okay. This is no trickery here. This is water being level. So say, for example, the, uh, the little uh, pyramid type object, the little uh, triangle of the far, the far left, the far right. Would they see each other? For example, two boats and there's people aboard these boats. Would they see each other from that distance? Yeah. Well, how far how far is that boat from the far left to the far right from each other? Um, 
you know, again, that would be an estimate. Say, okay, I would say okay. maybe so uh, if if they're far enough, then yeah, that then they will not see each other. But at, in that picture there, which looks like it's taken pretty close to sea level, um, and doesn't have a super wide angular view there, I I would imagine they probably are close enough to see each other. Okay. Now, what if you reversed it and say, for example, you're in the boat where the rocks are, for example, and the other boat on the far right is at the horizon. You flip, you just you just flip it around. Not flip it around, but you don't get it. So, you, for yeah, example, the boat. For example, the boat, the boat for the at the far right. Imagine it was at the horizon, and from okay. our perspective, would that be over the curve? If it's right at the peak of the horizon. My point is, let me just cut to the chase. My point is this: we do not see boats going over the curve left or right. We only oh, see it you, going you towards the, the horizon. Field? That's my point. I'm trying. I'm going to get it. I, I'm just going to cut to the chase. But the ge geometry of it, we we wouldn't expect that because, as we sit where we are on Earth, everything around us goes slightly down to to the horizon, right? That there isn't any left to right that we would see. But now, uh, a fair point: is there ever a left to right curve? Right? There's no curve of the Earth. Yeah, there's no curve. So no, absolutely not. Well, you, you got that right. Well, we're on the let, same page with um, that. So, Craig, could you bring up um, number thirty, please? Yeah, one sec. So uh, it, it's it's difficult, and and you know you you see these high altitude balloons, and and the cameras are often GoPros, but even if it's not, um, even if they have a rectilinear camera real proper camera lenses are super expensive and the wider the angle of view the more expensive they are to have rectilinear even then they're still um boeing so it's it's difficult with just a picture and no external reference to see any sort of a, a confirmed left to right curve right so is this uh are we seeing this right now yeah so this is um this is uh, without without um, lining it up there yet. This is from Rory, and uh, he has there two straight edges taped to each other on the left side and then on the right side of this um, this platform here. <clears throat> and he took this in Ibiza, which is um, you know uh, an island there south of um, I don't know. It's in the Mediterranean, right? And he's somewhere around 500 feet up. I'm not certain on the elevation. It doesn't matter too much. So go to the next one there, Craig, um, 31. 31. So here he lined up the horizon right inside those parallel lines, right? So so because they're straight edges, and he confirmed that, we know that they're straight. Now, this, this camera may or may not make it straight, right, on itself. But that is a physical straight edge. So we can look at the straight edge. And, and see if um, uh, the straight edge compared to the horizon, if there's a curve. Now, it's difficult in that picture to see, but if you do a left to right compression, so go to the next there, number 32. 32. And so now, now we can see a very clear curve within the straight edge so we can see a left to right curve on the horizon with this image right here exactly what you are wanting you got to be kidding me this is your evidence that that that, that ships can stick to the side and underneath the ball earth give me a break <laughs> well, personal incredulity is what you're going with i'll uh here i'll write, write that uh, i i just think it's hilarious you know this um this example here you know it just uh this is a proof of ball. You know? <laughs> it's it's just ridiculous. I just think. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Russian, yeah. Russian. What yeah. you what, what you said is it's ridiculous. I can't believe you're doing this. Now I need you to actually demonstrate that it's ridiculous. Go. Okay, Craig, can you please go to thirty one seconds in the video clip I sent you? Yeah, I hope that addresses my image. It's 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 gonna lead to that, um, and then right after the video plays, there's a there's a there's a, a document 
um, a government document uh, from Antarctica. But first, play the video clip, please. All right, I'm just going to turn the audio down. So uh, nothing there's, there's, I don't think there's any audio, actually. So I don't think, you don't have to worry about that. My, it's very minute, but go ahead. Okay, that is the Toronto skyline. It's playing? Yeah, it's still Now, playing. explain this. What is happening here? You know, this is from a uh, uh, short level, I would say about uh, five feet, uh, five and a half feet up. What's happening here? Why, why, why is the building disappearing, McToon? Can you, can you please explain that? Why is the bill? Sorry, so I'm not yeah, seeing it. Well. Let it play, yeah, let it play it again, Craig. Once, one more time, please, so he can he can fully uh, absorb what was just shown. If you could back up, please. Yeah, thanks, Craig. Play one more time so it can sink in. 30, 30, 31 seconds, please. Oh, go to thirty three seconds. Okay, 33. How oh, you, you just admitted you're a Mason? <laughs> uh, I'll get it paused on 33 for you. So, what exactly is happening here? How do you explain this on, on, on a ball? I, I don't know what you're getting at here. I, this is just a, a, a somebody zooming out, right? Uh, what am I getting at? is these buildings are disappearing by zooming they're, out this yeah, shows you it's not due to a curve of the small. earth it, it's 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 demonstrating it's not due to a curve of the earth mctoon this is what it's demonstrating it's, how can yeah, you not, you're right this it's, is very it's obvious demonstrating, it's demonstrating that the camera's angular resolution is shrinking as you zoom out how's this hard uh no the camera is, is static it's it's not <laughs> going down it's zooming no, out no, but, yeah, the zoom is it's zooming out. So the angular resolution of, of the image that's on the on the of the city there is getting smaller and smaller until it gets to the size of you know one pixel or less for the entire building. I don't know what and you're that's saying. That's due to what? That's due to what? That's due to perspective. Angular perspective. Absolutely. You're right. There we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now we got that out of the way. Wait, How about this, Craig? Just move over. Uh, a little no, no, bit more. Right, just hold on, to, uh, all right, all right. hold on. You didn't address my image. Correct. I was just about to say uh, this is, buildings disappearing over the horizon is curvature looking straight on. What MC Tune showed was curvature from left to right. That's what we were supposed to be addressing. So please address that. Okay. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. So this was the I saw it, but I want to see it again. Image, and then this is the compressed image. So I'll just flip back and forth between them so you can see. That's the, the normal image. Obviously, it's level with the horizon. And then that okay. is the compressed image. Craig, can, can we do this? Can we? Can you please do this for me? Can you do a slow zoom in into this image? Instead of going from um, you know from this to all, all the way in, I want to get a slow zoom in. Not this n nonsense, please. Thank you. So I want a slow zoom, zoom in. Zoom in on this image. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Is that good enough? No, 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 no. I don't think that's what I was saying. Uh, the, go back to the, the first image. The uh, first to the, image. To this one. No. Yeah. Uh, no, the, the one you showed previous to this. The one previous, please. Uh, no, the, no, no. You're not getting what I'm saying. Go back to the, 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 the panned your, your, out view. Your, oh, this not one. This your, one your, your video. Your video, you mean. No, 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 no. McToon's uh, uh, first um, that... frame that he showed. Right there. Now, yeah, stop. Okay. Stay there, please. Now, yeah. if you can zoom in slowly, slowly, and show me the curvature. Not going to the next one, just from this. No, see, you're going from one, it's one extreme to the other. You're going from A to Z. I want to see A, B, C, all the way down to, to Z uh, with, with the zoom in. If you Wait, can do I, that, please. I, I, I right here, yeah. What you're, that you're missing is that, it, that that image, this image here, isn't zoomed in. It's compressed from left to right. Yeah, that's... That's a left right compression. All right. So, um, okay. So, why can't we get the same? So, it's not from the same photo, then. Is that what you're saying? No, it, it's it the, is same... the same photo. Not this okay. one. It's the next photo, actually. 
So it's telling it's me that, something. That you know, one that's something. Left to right. Let me see if I can if I can just explain it differently. What we have here is an image, correct, MC Tune? And yep. there is indeed a curve in the image, but the curve is very subtle. So to make that subtle curve more noticeable, you compress the image from left to right. Uh, Reg, I don't think you're getting what I'm what I'm what I'm asking for. I'm asking for this image to be zoomed in so we get the results that I saw with the zoom in, you know, in, in a gradual so, phase. Not go from A to Z, please. If you so, want to yeah. do that, that's fine. We'll move on. Right. I can, well, I can give you the source images if you want to look at them and do your own compression. Right. Um, uh, I'm not, there's no trickery there. Uh, you, that doesn't do me good. I want to do it for demonstration so can, can everybody you, can, can see Can you see it. this on the screen? Can you, can you see this? This was the, this was the image that MC Toon had, right? Um, yeah, I want this to be yeah, So I put in. it into paint. Holy. Um, no, no. Am I, oh, no, I've got to select all, haven't I? Select all. And then zoom in. There you go. Yeah. So great, that's, great. that's the same image. And now zoom in to this. It's a bit more pixelated, but you have to do it to... all in one go in order for it to not be pixelated. Ah. Oh, the image is pretty pixelated anyway, by the looks of it. These boneheads in the uh, in the in the chat box, they don't understand what I'm even asking. Just want to tell those knuckleheads. Yeah, you're asking oh, for sorry. something zoomed in when that's not what MC2 provided. He didn't provide an image that was zoomed in. He provided an image that was compressed from left to right. There is a difference. You're asking okay, for something that, that's that what he I'm did asking, not present. Reds. I understand, Reds, but that's what I'm asking for. I understand that, I, but I want. What I want is a zoom, and that's all I'm asking for. I understand right. what you know. That's and why I'm what asking that, for this. And what is that supposed to show? It's supposed to show consistency. That's what it's supposed to show: consistency. That when you you know when you zoom in, we're going to see a curve here. That's what I no, want to see. No, no, no. That's not what it shows because it's going to show the curve. The compression, the compression illustrates the curve that's there. If the curve is very subtle in the image, zooming in on it, you're only going to get an even more subtle curve. Okay. So this is I, this is like when you go to the, the hardware store and you buy a two by four, right? And you look at it straight and it looks straight. But then you look down and you can see that there's a, a bow to it. That's what we're doing with the compression. Yeah, I, I know. I understand that. But I like to look at things at all different angles, try to get as many different perspectives of an object. If I'm going to buy a piece of wood, I'm not going to look at one angle. I'm going to look at every angle possible, left, right, side, up, down, straight, everywhere, not just one side. All right. To well, get a I'll better idea what those, I'm dealing I'll with. I'll provide you those images uh, yeah. so you can look at them yourself. But here's the thing. You're seeing right here in front of you a left to right curve of the horizon. So you've asked for it. You've said it's totally flat, but you're looking at a left to right curve of the horizon. I understand. Listen, guys, I understand. I understand it's compressed and that's being it's distorted. It's like a fish eye lens camera. That's exactly, exactly and that gets to this. Not like a fish eye lens camera. Well, let's go, let's go to this. Let's go uh here, let's see an let's example. Let's go to 17 have, seconds. Hang on, hang on, hang on, guys. Hang on. I just want to make sure that I'm sorry, Russian, I have to call you out. That image has straight edges so that you actually have a visual reference. If the if the if the horizon was actually uh, actually you know perfectly straight and you compress the image from left to right, we should also see the straight edges curving as well. Are the straight edges curving in this image? Fair the enough. answer is no. Listen, uh, listen, what you guys are doing behind the scenes with the compression and altering uh, what's happening in this natural world, you know. It's, it can be it can be manipulated. So I'm, I'm not too I'm, out there. You are giving up on this so easily. Thank you. No, I'm not because I want I want Craig. I want you to go 17 seconds in. Right then there. after you go to 17 seconds in, if you can go to 25 seconds in, so you see this, the you see the curve pull here. This is do oh this is what I want to explain here. I should back up. This is from a documentary, uh, from the History Channel. Or I'm sorry, actually Natural Geographic, where they're showing these uh, workers on on the, on the World Trade Center. They're working on the spire, and they're they're showing how they have to climb these uh, 
climb up and, and do some alterations and this and that. But the bottom line is within this video, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's not about the ball earth, but it is ball earth programming using a GoPro fisheye lens. Okay. You see the curvature, this, this, this massive curvature of the earth. Now let's go from the same exact documentary. Let's go 25 seconds in. And what do we see? That's that's 25 seconds. Okay, let me get to I'm sorry. Uh, no, we need to go a little bit more than that. I'm sorry, maybe. I don't know why my, my counter is off here. How about try uh, 28 seconds? I'm not sure why you're getting... It's not showing at 25. It should be showing at 25. Go 28, please, Craig. I'm sorry. Uh, that's 28. A little bit back. Back a little bit more. Back a little bit more. Until we get it. It's in between. It's an image in between the two. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's there. Is that it? No, no, you went forward. You got you gotta you gotta go back. Go back. Alright, I'll play it from twenty. Is this yeah, the one yeah, you mean? I think it's a delay in the video that you're playing. Yeah, you, you went too uh you went too far again. Just just the image prior. No, you gotta go back. You gotta go back further. This How about one. this, Craig? Just show the show the curvature video, the curvature uh, footage from on top of the spire, and just let it play from there. And then you, oh, there, there it is, right there. Now this is from the same uh, uh, documentary from Natural Geographic. Go back. Don't, don't let it play anymore. Go back. Go back. Go back, yeah. please. Oh, look at um, Hangouts rather than um, okay, right the, there. The stream. Well, I'm yeah. I'm sorry. You know we're delayed. I'm looking at YouTube. I'm sorry because I go yeah. to Hangouts. <laughs> It's yeah, not always displayed edge. there for some reason. Now it's displayed on Hangouts yeah. because you're displaying things. It wasn't showing on the Hangouts. I had to go to YouTube. Anyways, this is a, a bit higher than the spire that the man was working on where they show the curvature. So what I'm getting at is this. This is why they invented the GoPro uh, cameras. It's, it's subconscious programming with the masses with these documentaries. Right. Instead of subconscious programming, could you just show some evidence, please? The, again, the invention of the whole GoPro. For example, let me just get this out here, McToon. I've had many uh, arguments, debates with people in everyday life. They tell me, oh, I've seen the curve of the earth from my GoPro, um, from the, what do you call those, those drones. Oh, from my drone, I see the curvature. I said, you understand that, that there's, there's a fisheye lens installed in these? It makes a drastic difference. He goes, well, I didn't know that. He goes, yeah, now you know. All right, that's fine. Can you get to your point, though? My point is, I can't believe you don't understand my point. You see the difference. This is even higher up from the spire, that perspective of the man climbing the, the uh, a ladder on the spire. It's even higher. Look how flat the horizon is. Okay. So you understand so, okay. what no, I'm getting at is this. Guys, hold on. Right. What I'm getting at is this. Opticals, they can't be trusted. You can't exactly. trust them. With, with exactly people can manipulate them. Rory. They can be manipulated. With GoPro lenses... Here's a yep. standard camera. That's There's no I, curvature. I completely, avoided, I completely nullified your argument by showing an external reference. Those two straight edges completely, completely destroy your GoPro argument. So That's, take the same yeah. image and put that same rig in front of it and, and compare it, and you'll see a curvature. Just you like know, the you know, right Here's now. the difference, pal. Here's the difference, pal. Uh, you're using your footage. I'm using something that I captured off a documentary that's presented to millions of people. I'm not making up, I'm not just, I can fabricate whatever I want. Grab something you can get off the media and use that. How about that, pal? Why does that matter? We're not it talking does because about you things have made your own, for, for common- you have your own footage, you can manipulate the footage. Why don't you get something off a documentary, for example, and use that like I did? Why would I do that instead of something where because we can- Because you can manipulate what you present. Out and neutralize the lens. Because you can manipulate what you present. You hear what I said? I'm going to say it a third time. You can manipulate what you present. How about be transparent and grab something off a documentary? National Geographic, History Channel, their footage and display curvature or non-curvature, whatever you want to display. Use that instead of okay. your own footage. If that, if <laughs> I don't think you want that because there's an awful lot of National Geographic what, no? footage showing the Earth from space. No, so well, I, listen, I well, now, you're changing the goal post. now you're changing the goalposts here, pal. No, wait a second. I'm showing you from National Geographic. They're using two different cameras, a standard camera and a fisheye lens camera. 
you get different results. Obviously, this is higher up that spire. This is a higher footage. It's flat. Absolutely. Now take the same rig and apply that to this. You'll see curvature. But you can't because because there, it's it's not it's not a great lens for testing that. That's not it's the lens's purpose. Well, what I'm getting at, McToon, is this, and I'll say it very nicely. I, what I'm telling you is this: What is you're the purpose me of manipulating what, the image? Is what you're doing? No, no. What I'm saying is this, McToon. Say it. Just make it real clear. You're accusing me of manipulating that image. Uh, right? I'm not. I, I'm saying is it can be slightly distorted uh, uh, on purpose or not to for your advantage. Be clear. Please be clear. How that image could have been distorted? It's been compressed. It's not as natural state. The compression does not change the curve. It lets well, us see the curve. Well, again, it's your footage. You can do whatever you want with it. How do I know you didn't manipulate it exactly. in some form so, or fashion? That gets it, back to using if footage that's available. Balls, go do it yourself. You live in, near San Francisco. You can get 500 feet up. You go get yourself a couple straight edges. You, you put them together and you take a picture of the horizon through those straight edges and you see It'll curve. Look here, man. You know, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to change the goalposts, but I am in a way changing topics. I don't want to go over the same thing over and over. You know, this 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 ball earth we're supposedly living on. You know, let me ask you this. Do you know the supposed radius of the supposed ball earth we're living on? Don't don't Google it. Do you know the radius? The radius? Yes, don't Google uh, it. Uh, no. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a flat earther, and I know. This is why I, I'm not a ball earther, because I know the numbers that are given to us, okay? It's 3, 000, supposedly 3,959 miles. That's the supposed radius. So can you get the diameter from that? You should be able to very quickly. Sure. What is it? 24,000. No, the diameter. Do you know the difference between diameter and, and oh, circumference? Diameter. What is It'd it? Don't double, that. Don't, don't double that. Look, I'm not going to play math games where I, no, I'm not this, allowed to use this calculator. Is your, this is your game. Use my math. calculator. Eighth grade math, pal. Eighth grade math, pal. You don't. So you're you're a ball arthur. You don't know the radius. You don't know the difference between diameter and circumference. I'm surprised. Keep your point. I'm very disappointed in you. You don't Russian know bits. Oh, Russian bits. Russian I'm bits. I'm, to get you. Hang on. Russian bits. I'm going to ask you to stop committing fallacies. Otherwise, I'm really going to hammer your ass. So get to the actual point. What I'm getting at is this. McToon, he's he's here defending the ball earth. He doesn't even know the dimensions of the freaking ball earth he's defending. You don't know how high your son is in your own well, stupid model. Because so sack up and tell me the high elevation of your science son. Has are you backing up science claims or not? You're you're Sack defending the curvature. Only the elevation of your son in your mind. Listen, you don't know it. Shut the hell up, McToon. I'm very very disappointed. You're like one of the weakest people I've debated. You don't know the radius of the so-called ball earth you're defending. You don't know the difference between diameter and circumference. What is the diameter of the ball earth? Give it to me. Spit it out. Sack up and tell me you the elevation don't know. of your son. You, it doesn't I'm a flat matter. I know this. Look it up. I'm a flat earther. I know this, and you don't. But that that is, right. and you and Red, you don't you, and, and, and you, you don't know and you don't know the distance to, to the sun. You don't know the hey, elevation. Of the sun. Mom, there's many. Red, there's Red, many. Red, there's mom, many. There's dating? many. There is many aspects of the flat earth that you don't know about. You don't need to know every little thing about something in order to defend it. All right. Red. Not only that, but you, but you bringing up, you bringing up National Geographic and saying that he should only use that is called the genetic fallacy. No, I didn't say if that. You want, if you want to, if you want to logic, I will logic like hell for you. Reds, I did not say he should use National Geographic. So, what I'm so saying is this: what Reds. I'm going to tell you to do is yeah. stick to the points and quit committing fallacies. What is your next point that that demonstrates the Earth to be flat? Go. Okay, Reds. Thank you. Thank you for letting me continue here. My whole point was this, and I'm going to calm down a little bit because I'm really, I cannot believe I'm debating a man that doesn't know the very foundation, the basics of this world. You don't people. know the elevation of your own sure. Shut up. Hold on. Hold on. Let me say, let me speak. I'll let I'm going to say it every time. You're, you're losing. You, That's why you're you accuse me of, of not knowing the numbers off the top Dude, of my I'm head that I you, pal. look up. I'm going to ask you to show Red, me the sun elevation every damn time. Reds, let me finish what I'm going to say. McToon, just, just chill out. Mc, all right, McToon. all right. Stop, 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 stop. Listen, listen. All right, Russian vids, 
no more going to fallacies. Otherwise, I am going to give MC Tune the right to call you out on that. All right, okay, you're being, no you're, you're, you are being an absolute fucking hypocrite right now, Russian bits. I just want you to know that Red. right now. Red pal. So Red's let Red's him, Red's. let let him. He, I will go ahead and tell him. Don't bring up the distance of the sun. You don't bring up the diameter or the circumference of the Earth. Deal. Great. I'm glad we had this conversation. Red. Go. Reds. Reds. Let me just say this. I was trying to get to it. McToon just just interrupted me. Just this is what no. I want to say. I don't want to be interrupted again. I just want to get what I want to get out. So I'm getting to a point. That's why I'm asking him these basic questions. Okay. Go. This were, okay. This is where I'm getting at. The reason I asked for the radius, diameter, circumference, it gets down to how many miles, how many, uh, what's the curvature rate, basically, of this freaking supposed ball earth. That's what it comes down to. That's what I'm trying to get at. So what I was going to get is ask him a simple question. He lives in Minnesota, right? So what's the curvature rate from Minnesota? Say if he wants to fly to, say, London, England. Look it up. It should be available. It should. Listen, when you fly, for example, if you flew from Minnesota to London, it'd be nice for a pilot to say one day, hey, by the way, on, on your flight to, here's a, here's a fact, uh, on, on, during your long flight, just, just for your information, the curvature rate from Minnesota to London, England is X, X amount. They never give that. They never tell you in the school textbook what the curvature rate is. Look, give me one school textbook. Direct me to one single school textbook that demonstrates the Earth's curvature rate. You're not going to find it. Why is that? It doesn't exist. Period. Go ahead, right. McToon. You have a point. That, why does that matter? There's a lot of things that don't get covered that don't need to be get covered. Well, so you I'll have a point. Because so far... You haven't said any evidence here, evidence for how it's flat. All you've done is gone around in circle and gish gallop on, on nonsense that doesn't matter. So Magoon, what do you have as evidence? Let, let me explain, Magoon. You want to concentrate on what's in the sky. I want to concentrate on the supposed curve that you're claiming we have. And you want to... You Russia know, vids. You want to Russia do vids. That. Russia vids. Do not... Do, do not assume what his intentions are okay or what he wants to focus on he asked you for or, evidence okay, of okay. of the flat earth stick to evidence for the flat earth please go yeah that, that's what i'm getting at that's what i'm getting then get at. to it because you're just bitching about what's what's being taught in school that doesn't fucking matter get to your evidence of the flat earth again reds i'm setting the foundation if i'm not interrupted i'll get to it my whole point is this i want to stick to water being level we know it's level. It needs to be contained to find its level. No one has seen the curve of the earth from a freaking plane. Okay, nobody. Anybody? So you guys are looking for the curve of the earth at ground level. I, I just showed you the curve of the earth from 500 feet above Ibiza. Okay, okay, McToon. How about this? And nobody interrupt me here. Why is that Neil deGrasse Tyson stated from 128,000 feet, Neil, uh, uh, Felix Baumgartner's jump, there's no, there's no curvature. The only reason you see curvature is because of the fisheye lens. So is, explain is that Neil, from 128,000 feet. There's no curvature. Greg, is Neil joining us today? Cool. The, the point when, is, no, no, Neil um, coming in. Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson will not be joining us today. Um, so I don't think we can. Uh, yeah. By, 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 by the way, Sorry. by the way, MC Tune, MC Tune, um, yeah. ha, have you, have you personally made the assertion that at 120 whatever thousand feet? That there would be quote zero curvature. Have you personally made that yeah. claim in this? No, that sounds like a straw man to me. Yeah, that does sound like no, a straw man. So Russian, reds, Russian vids, feet. Russian vids, Russian vids, quit yeah. using straw man. Okay, address his actual feet. point. Reds, hold on, Reds, give me a break. He listen. He said he can see from 500 feet. How can that be possible? When Neil deGrasse Tyson said you can't see from 128,000 feet. The when, math because, doesn't add because, up. Because Neil deGrasse Tyson and him are talking about two different situations and also the fact oh, that okay. Felix Baumgartner did not have a visual reference like what MC Toon showed in his image. The image oh, in sure M did? the in the image that MC Toon had had a visual reference and then it was compressed from left to right to make the curve more noticeable. And no, that would there was no manipulation. Otherwise, any artificial curve that would have been introduced into the image would have also curved the straight edges that were used as that visual reference to begin with. So again, Red. quit using a straw man. Otherwise, I'm I am going to call you out on it. I'm just saying is what he says doesn't equate to what 
these so-called leaders of science are saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm comparing what he's you know, claiming. I, I don't give a damn what anybody says that that isn't me. So I, I don't I'm not obliged to defend what they say. So you can move on well, from that. No straw mans, please. No, I showed you. I showed you curve. I showed you curve. You didn't address it. You ran away. You tucked tail and ran away no. from that picture. <laughs> so, so now, Hilarious. show me some evidence. Evidence. Simple. There's no curvature there. It hasn't That's been not seen. That's Don't, claim. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, you're trying. You ask me a question. I'm going to answer it to you. The only curvature we supposedly get is from uh, from NASA in, in these space I agencies. Curvature. You're you're Was lying. That? You're just flat out oh, lying. Oh, you know, at least you know this is flat. A picture of curve. Uh, no, no. Your your compressed image, your manipulated image doesn't impress me. All right, I'm not so impressed. I, 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 don't, I don't think I don't think the point of that image was to impress you. The point of that image was to debunk you, which it did. Back to this. Okay. Again, yeah. how about this? How about this, uh, Magoon? I want you to do is get some footage off the mainstream and use that with supplied, not your own. A concocted footage that you who knows what you're doing behind the scenes okay okay i'm stop, not saying you stop, are hold stop, on hold that on that is I'm no 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 that is the genetic fallacy look it up reds what i'm trying to explain is i'm not saying he is i'm not saying he is i'm just saying is i want to use third party footage of sure that right. i will i use. will choose national geographics show earth 101 uh you could google that there okay Greg, bring it up and and uh yeah that that looks like a good one for me. Did you say you need me to bring something up? Yeah, I'm sorry. National Geographic Earth 101. Okay, bear with me one sec. Some third party footage as requested. Yeah, that's that'd be nice. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Go in 15 seconds, please. Sorry, National Geographic what? Earth Earth 101. Uh, Again, you know, I'm going to emphasize, I'm very shocked that McToon didn't know the simple, basic foundation of the supposed curvature, uh, the, the radius, and diameter. We're, and we're all I'm disappointed shocked. that you I'm don't so know the actual... Shocked. And yeah, we're I'm all disappointed shocked. that you don't know the distance to the sun on your own fucking Nobody model. does. Reg, so you don't have a measuring tape. Where are we going in, in this MC2? <laughs> All right, uh, uh, fight, fight the flat Earth. I sent you something on Hangouts. Just click on it and par and pause it right at the time code that's listed in the link. Okie dokie. Uh, bear with me. Um, Thank you. Pause it, it right there. You, well, you, I, like I said, it's sad that a flat Earther knows the supposed There's dimension of the baller. That's that's embarrassing. Feet. Well, it's embarrassing, embarrassing to not know the elevation of the sun. Shut up. You don't right, either. Anyway. How many times has it changed throughout history, Mc, McGoon? McFraud? How many times has it changed throughout history? Oh, the, the Russian, oh. Russian bits. Russian oh. bits. Enough of the fallacy. We're, we're yeah, taking a look at the image sorry, that Red. MC2 sorry, has. I apologize, so, Red. Hey, Go ahead, Red. Uh, MC2. We yeah. are now showing the image that you, that you want yeah. to yeah. pull up. As requested, third-party oh. images of the Earth. That's what you wanted, so I did it. I, I'm happy to provide. Um, apples and oranges, pal. We're, we're talking about uh, a perspective with the horizon. Sure. That's some freaking phony baloney uh, uh, CGI ball art. I'm talking about real world. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, you just made a claim. Hold on a self. second. You just made a claim that this is CGI. Have you run the forensic analysis that this is CGI? Or is that your personal incredulity? Because we've never experienced any freaking curvature to this world. Never. No, no, no. That's that's a different topic. Are you deep? Are you uh, are you asserting that you have seen the forensic analysis of this image that you claimed was CGI? It doesn't match reality. It, it doesn't match reality, pal. What's hard to understand? That's your opinion, and that's that's just that's personal. a fact. You've never seen the curve of the earth yourself. You, oh, could could you bring that image back up? Thirty-two. Um, image number 32, Craig. 32. I've seen it myself. You've that seen one? it yourself. 400 people watching have seen it themselves. 
I don't know what you're doing here, dude. You keep saying we haven't seen the curve when it's right in front of you. There's the curve. You tuck tail and run away and say, oh, it's manipulated. But it's not because we can see that the straight edges are straight and the curved horizon is curved. That's your footage you produced. You produced. I'm not the genetic listen. fallacy. Actually, Rory oh, produced listen. it. And I'll give you all the images. You can do that compression yourself. And when you do the compression yourself, you know what you're going to find? It curves. And I asked you to sack up and go to some cliff over, over the water by San Francisco where you live. Set up a similar thing. Put two straight edges together with a gap between them. Right? Take two metal four foot or eight foot levels, spirit levels, put a gap between them, right? Some stack, some pennies, tape it together, take a picture of the horizon through it, then compress it. It'll curve, but you won't because that would ruin, ruin your, your, uh, your belief. Well, again, you know, when, when, when you take any kind of footage, you manipulate it, you can oh, get I'm, your desired I result. You do it yourself. Well, this, do listen, it. the way I see it's like this, McToon, the only way you're going to get your freaking curve is through this compression, uh, applying with Photoshop. It's not real world. It's not observable, you know, and that's what it comes down to. So I don't care about your compressed footage. I'm not impressed. Tucking, thank you very much for not addressing the issue. No, I addressed just... it. I no, addressed you, it. I'm, no, I'm you didn't. No, 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 you didn't. All you said is that you don't care. That's not addressing it. No, I, I just, I just think that you know, I'm not going to take this evidence of anything. Some compressed footage, you know, this, this little compressed footage. It, it, it no, I'm not going to take this as. A, why don't you see? Why don't you show me a, a freaking boat or you know, going on the side or the, underneath the ball earth? Let me let's see some footage of that. How about that, pal? Moving the I don't post. think so. Got it. Are you flat listen, out? Are you taking notes from flat out here? Listen, I'll, I'll listen to me here, okay? Throughout human history, with with uh, uh, video footage, uh, we we never seen interesting enough from ISS or any of these uh, uh, space agencies. We don't see any freaking planes or 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 ships or boats going on the side of the ball or going around the bottom. We don't see any of that. But we can zoom in supposedly with Google Maps and see someone's front yard, backyard. We can see little individuals walking around the streets. I find that very interesting. You Do know, you understand optics and photography? I think I you understand don't. optics. I understand hey guys, optics can guys, be uh, I've can be distorted. I've just put an image on screen. Um, MC Toon, could you explain to Russian vids what's happening in this image? Yeah, I'll, I'll use small words. Um, <clears throat> so there, yeah, for a guy a, that doesn't know the freaking radius of the Earth, okay, go ahead, use small words. Oh, uh, and and what was the elevation of the sun in your model? Again, so, there's no way for see, me to measure it. I can't give you an answer. I'd be a liar like you if I did. Triangulation. It's simple. This is eighth grade math. You can triangulate to find the elevation of something. From a it guy that doesn't every... know the difference between diameter and circumference. Okay. Uh, 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 MC Toon, can you please can you please explain what's yeah. going so, on in the image to a guy that doesn't understand eighth grade math? Go. Yes. So that uh, in the, the, high the near the near a ship there appears to be on the horizon right near the edge of where the peak of the horizon is. And that other ship there is past it. It's much farther away. And there, it's obscured by the horizon, by the curve of the Earth. So there is another curve of the Earth image that you get to see live. Um, how about zooming in? Let's see what we get. Do with the video. Not, not the still, with the video. Uh, I, this is a still that I've got. I don't have the video for so, this. I, I've seen, and I know what you're asking. You're, you're suggesting that when uh, when you zoom in, that somehow that one that's on the left there would would rise up, and you'd see the hull of that ship. But I've never once seen an image where partial zoom, you don't, it's behind the curve, and then you do full zoom, and somehow it changes how much is hidden behind the curve. I've never once seen that, even though I've heard many times. That Zoom will do that. I've never seen it. So if you could produce that, find the one magical image where the, the Zoom actually makes a difference in how much is over the horizon, I'd love that. And I would give you I would give you all sorts of props for that, but it's never happened I did because earlier. there's something in the way. I, I showed some, Actually, I showed you that footage of the Toronto skyline, and I guess you forgot about that already. <laughs> I forget about that at all. 
not so part way through if you pause that part way through the amount of the city that's hidden okay and then you zoom all the way in and the amount of the city that's hidden it's the same amount that's hidden the zoom doesn't change okay. how much of it is hidden it changes okay. how much that you can see because it gets smaller but it doesn't change yeah. how much is behind the curve okay fair enough i actually i have this document from uh it's a government document, United States government. Um, Craig, if you can please go to, say, a 53 seconds in the video and pause it there. Okay, these are observations from Antarctica. Uh, one sec. Yeah, 53 seconds, please. Thank you. Okay. You can read the whole thing or just get to the, to the very bottom. Mountains have been sighted. At 300 miles, you want you want you, this is a you can look it up. This is a legit document from the government from Antarctica. Mountains have been sighted 300 miles away. You know how much curvature there'd be 300 miles away. Do you have any understanding of that on the supposed radius of three three thousand three thousand nine hundred fifty nine miles? Do you understand how much what drastic curve there'd be the so-called ball earth? You understand how there's so much inconsistencies. That's why we're having these debates, so-called debates. There is no debate. They're just flat. So um, do, could, could they see the base of the mountains? Or they just say the, mountains just have the, been sighted th at 300 miles away. Okay, so it doesn't say they could see the base of the mountains. It just says they could see the mountains. We don't know how much of the mountains they could see. Is that right? How large are these mountains? What's the tallest mountain? In Antarctica, that's the question. Then you can go from there. Hey, hey Russian vids, I've just got a quick question for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Didn't you say that like governments will lie to us? They sure do. Yeah, about but is, isn't this about a government document? Important things. Yeah. They're not lying. They're not lying about water being wet. They're not. You know, they're not lying about that. So, so the this particular wet. government document isn't a lie. No. I'm, not, I'm right. not, what I'm saying is there's inconsistencies. That's what I'm getting at. That's cool. That's cool. Just to know. All right. uh, what I'm getting no. at is, hold so on, I'll, hold I'll on. Address this. No, no, no. You, you brought it up. You asked me. I'll address it. Okay. Good enough. We don't know the elevation of the of the the viewer. We don't know how much of the of the mountain was seen, whether it was all of it or just the top of it, right? So this tells us nothing that we can go on. Right now, we see lots of images where the bottom of things is is obscured first. That that tells us it must be curved. Whether or not we know the radius is different. We know it's curved, and then once we know it's curved, we can figure out the radius. Would you agree? At three hundred miles away, wouldn't, wouldn't that um, mountain be curving away? Shouldn't it be curving away? Or do we do we see a mountain pointing straight up? Have you ever seen a mountain curving away from you? At, and all right, so at 300 miles, how much away would it tip? At at uh, 300 miles, again, we have to know uh, the, the height of this mountain. That's the point. They listen. No, they, they, honestly, listen, hold on. They should they, need to know the height of a mountain to know how far it would tip away from the viewer. Yeah. Oh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the uh, I'm trying to get the drop the the drop rate. No, no, no. You brought no, no, hold on. The drop would no, be over you, over. You, listen, here's what I'm getting at. The drop would be about 10. I could be off a little bit, but approximately at 300 miles, the drop would be 10 miles down. How many mountains are 10 miles high? Mount Everest? So you're saying that they saw this from sea level? Again, I'm just going by the information that's provided okay. here from this there government document. At 300 viewers, miles. Unless you can show me the viewer's height. This is pointless. There's no value to this. There is. Because we don't know the viewer's height. The viewer's height makes a massive difference on how far you can see. Um, obviously, they're sitting so, there in Antarctica. Where in the document does it say the viewer's height? Well, see, n n <laughs> this is a good way of, of, of backtracking and like <laughs> weaseling your way out of this. Okay. 10 miles down, 10 miles drop. Shouldn't see any freaking mountains. Let, let's be clear. All right, on that. all right. Stop, stop, stop. stop, stop. stop. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. You asked for numbers. I went ahead and got it. At 300 miles, the mountain would be tilting by 4.1 degrees in total. 
at uh, oh, at a oh, height. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, at a height yeah. of sixteen thousand feet, which is actually a little a little shorter than the tallest mountain in Antarctica, you would be able to see every mountain within a three hundred mile radius that is above fourteen thousand feet. Which, according to Wikipedia, is a, a vision mastiff, mountain Tyree, mountain Gardner, mountain Shrine, mountain Kira, Kira Patrick, mountain Elizabeth, mountain Rutherford, mountain Markham, mountain Sydney, mountain Bentley. And mountain mess, 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 I don't know how to pronounce that. Fuck it. So you're telling me they're, they're, um, red. basically, basically the stock doesn't you can still see the mountain. 10 mile if, drop, you can still see the if mountain. You're, if you're at a high enough it's elevation, if you're at a high enough elevation, absolutely. Pull up your pants, Craig. What's that? It said if you're at a high enough app at elevation, apps of fucking lootly, you can see a mountain. Yeah, well, we don't know the elevation. I, I can admit that, but you so know, this you is pretty vague. I can admit that, but I mean, they should freaking say well, we're in a freaking airplane, we can see the mountains, but it's pretty safe to say they're near at ground level. I don't think they're on a freaking other mountain saying they've seen another mountain 300 miles away. We don't know this, but what I'm getting is so 300 miles, it's a 10 mile drop, it's at least a 10 mile drop. Quantify. No, no, find an example that you can quantify, right? Uh, we need to know the viewer's elevation. That's a critical, critical part oh, of it. Of course, they're they're not giving us that. But I'm just saying, okay. it's a, it's a freaking Bring time up out a drop. drop. Yeah, first, I'm sure you, this isn't your only research that you did, is it? This is your best because this is pretty weak because you don't know the viewer <laughs> elevation. This is garbage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, McTill, because, I'm sorry, man. You're you're. I'm rolling over you're, here, man. Russian, I know you're Russian, humiliated. Russian, you don't know the foundation Russian, of your freaking ball Russian. earth. I'll Russian be embarrassed too far. Are you bitch, I, I, Russian bitch? When I say shut yeah. the fuck up, that means shut the fuck up. And by, the way, you, up by the way, you don't know the uh, the altitude of your own son. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to ask you to refrain from providing so called evidence where there is certain values that are critical to your point. If you don't have those values that are critical to your point, please refrain from using it. Otherwise, we're just speculating. Okay, okay, Red. Let's move on. Point, Red. We'll get us okay, Red. Let's move on. Let's move on. I have something else. Let's move on. Good. Cool. Yeah, I, I agree, Reds. We should we should move on from that. Okay. You know, supposedly, you know, um, I want to ask McToon. You know how fast supposedly the Earth is spinning at the equator, right? I just want to check your knowledge on that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, three hundred and sixty degrees per day. Uh, how many uh, miles per hour, please? Miles per hour, please. Oh, that's near a thousand. It's over a thousand, eleven more like eleven hundred. Okay, do you know how uh, the rate of speed is orbiting, supposedly orbiting the sun at three hundred and sixty degrees per year? Uh, no, a uh, uh, miles per hour, please. Supposedly, approximate. Yes. All right. That is between sixty-five thousand five hundred nineteen miles per hour and sixty-seven thousand seven hundred and fifty-six miles per hour did this yes close enough close enough to the supposed numbers were given now how fast is the earth and the sun supposedly moving uh while this is all happening as the earth is spinning the sun? Your point, is is this going to be where you illustrate to us that you don't understand frames of reference no it has nothing Probably. to do with that it goes to the will. point of you don't even know the, the you you're, you're really failing i give you a d minus or f when it comes to the basic foundation of this ball earth you, you're, you're defending. I, I'm very disappointed in, in this challenge, this so-called debate. It's not really a debate. It's an embarrassment on your side. I expected a lot more from you, and I'm not being mean. I'm just the being... Point. The, feeling yeah. is, the feeling is mutual, Russian Vids. Can you get to the point? Red, shut the hell up. Just take just take it easy, man. Red what I'm getting at is this. He, he's he's trying to keep get it on, on, on track. Listen, my point is this. Okay, with all this happening... You know, all this uh, dramatic uh, speed, spin, uh, orbit, and, and this drastic, uh, basically, corkscrew or vortex that, this, that the, uh, the sun, uh, what, what the Earth is doing, how do we get uh, the same stars, you know, in summer and winter, year after year for centuries? Can you explain that? What do you mean, like, like you, you think they don't move? <clears throat> I'm asking you a question. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to click. I'm, I'm asking a clarifying question. Do you think that the stars do not move? Um, I no. This is what I'm getting at. Earth is stationary. Stars, sun, the stars, sun, and the moon 
revolve around us. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, no, but are you claiming that the star, the position of the stars do not move, that they're always the same? Um, I, I just told you they're revolving above us. I, okay. I said that yes. we're stationary. It's a, it's a yes or no question. So please answer yes or no, please. Yeah, but but don't straw man me. But yes, the stars are moving, like I just demonstrated, like I just stated. Yeah, rotating, but but are they are they in a different position from year to year, or are they doing the exact same track every year for centuries? Well, according to what the what we see in the sky with the constellations, uh, basically they they do their spin just like the sun and the uh, moon's uh, circle above. They change positions as well. Uh, you, you, you're you're just kind of. I just answered you. I issue. said that just like the sun and the moon, they change positions. Yes, yes, they change position, but from year to year, are they in the same position or in different positions year to year? Year to year, they change. I think what he's asking is relative to each other. Do they change? You know, listen, I'm the one answering the question. It's getting flipped over back to me. I'm asking you a simple question. It's a you... clarifying question, and that is perfectly fine. Okay. What I'm getting at is this. I'm going to cut to the chase because, McToon, I'm sorry, man. You're, you're really just <laughs> – you don't want to answer my question. I understand why you can't answer them. Okay? What I'm getting at is this. With this drastic – this we're living on a supposed spinning water rocket ball, traveling at uh, supposedly half a million miles an hour through space, how is it – for example, during winter, we see one set of stars. Now, during summer, where supposedly the ball Earth is on the other side while it's orbiting the sun, how do we see the same stars when when the, the freaking supposed ball Earth is facing the opposite direction, looking at a total different sky? The, the, the Earth rotates once a day, you, right? You know that. Uh, so that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but go ahead. If this is the sun and the earth is here, dipped, right? Yeah. And it's pointing up that way, right? And it's spinning once a day this way, right? Then it comes around and it's on the other side of the sun, still tipped, spinning once a day, pointing that way to the same stars, right? No, now, I'm talking about the, the opposite side is, of the... Up, no, no. The, yeah. Over this way is a constellation that we can see at night when we're here. Over this way is a constellation we can see at night when we're here, right? The stars on that side, we don't see very well during the day. No, you don't understand, McToon. You, you, you're, you don't understand anything, really. What's basically happening is the opposite side of the so-called bald Earth is pointing away from the sun. That's night. Do you understand something? So You don't understand something so very simple. So I don't know. For example, no. hold up that object again. We hold up that object. We this is the sun, right? Okay. The sun the earth rotates every day. But you right? don't so, understand what I'm saying. Well, in all fair, in all this fairness, Russian vids, the reason why that might be is because you refuse to clarify. Okay. If you're facing the opposite direction, if you're on the dark side of the freaking so-called bald earth, you're looking at a different direction. When you're on the yes. other side, no, go on the other side. Yeah, that's night. Or you're looking but, that way for night. Now it's night too. That's on the other side of the ball. You're pointing in the opposite direction. It cannot be day. It cannot be nighttime when you're facing the freaking sun. McToon, what's wrong with you? I think Give you me don't a break. quite understand the heliocentric model here. Um, no, you don't even know the freaking dimensions of the heliocentric model of the so-called ball earth. You don't understand anything. I'm disappointed. Uh, I'm freaked. Reds, get me some competition. What's hey, wrong with you? Okay, fine. How about this, uh, Russian yeah. bits? You, you uh, with your with your vast array of knowledge of the hero, uh, heliocentric model, define yeah. to me what a sidereal day is. A sidereal day? No, a sidereal day. Never heard of it. I'm not gonna lie. And you be... and you claim to be a fucking expert. Cool. <laughs> Reds. Rez, that's the most obscure thing. I bet you freaking uh, Craig doesn't know it. McToon doesn't know it. I know. Ninety-nine percent of people don't know Wait, it in the freaking what, what the freaking chat box. What don't I know? Ask him. Sidereal day. He says you don't know. Oh, okay. No, we most certainly know. Do you know? Yeah. That's. I'll be honest. I don't. I never Sorry, heard no. of it. Okay, M MC Toon can explain it to you, and you can learn something. Uh -huh. So because because the sun rotates or sorry the the earth rotates around the sun it's not exactly 24 hours um 
a, a sidereal day isn't exactly 24 hours. It's slightly less because from if this is the sun and the earth moves a little bit during the course of 24 hours, the part of the sun, the earth that's facing back at the sun is is less than 24 hours. It's 23.9 something hours. Um, okay. So that's a sidereal day. It's slightly less. And that's so that we have um, throughout the year. Um, it's not just 24 hours. If we did 24 hours, then things would get all messed up in our clocks if a sidereal day was different. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. I never heard that term. Thank you for the explanation. I appreciate it. Bottom line is this. Again, you're pointing towards the sun when you're talking about night, when you're showing your little, uh, you're trying to <laughs> prove why we're seeing, um, you know, or trying to explain, I should say, you know, uh, why we're seeing, uh, you know, the same, it's supposed to seeing the same stars. We see the same stars every night, and I'm trying to have you answer why we see it uh, the well, way we, it is we, when the sun is orbiting night. around this. I'm sorry, the Earth is supposed to orbit around the sun. It, it doesn't that doesn't make sense. And now I, I want to get to this one uh, image here. Oh, hold on, um, we don't talk? see the same stars every night. Six months apart, we see completely different stars. That's the that's the constellations, and that's the zodiac and the astrology garbage. That's the point I want to get to here. Um, and it's completely you know, predicted and necessary on the heliocentric model. And, and by you thinking that it's not possible, just suggests that you don't understand the model. No, I understand. I, I understand that the ball earth, uh, the heliocentric model is nothing but rubbish. I, I do understand that. Yeah. I, he I do does, understand basically that. he doesn't understand it then. No, I understand again, <laughs> again, it doesn't make sense how we see, um, the same stars, uh, century after century, but again, with the supposed uh, orbit and the movement of the uh, the sun and the earth through space, we're getting the same results. It, it doesn't so, add up. Uh, yeah. so do you think, miles an hour through let's space. say, for example, do you think that, that Polaris is always in the same place every year for centuries? Well, we see Polaris, uh, the North Star, you know, uh, for centuries, uh, north of the so-called North Pole. Yeah, it's it's stationary. It's completely stationary, perfectly in the middle. Do you think? Um, relatively, I would say yes. I would say if, if, would if, you listen, like listen. You bet your entire channel on that fact and delete it, and never come back on YouTube if you're not right. <laughs> you guys like to do that because you guys want me off. You guys don't want me exposing the truth. No, That's no. why. <laughs> I know you're lying. I just want to show you up here. So you guys are, are you right. You guys, you guys make me wanna... laugh. Oh. Are you, hey, uh, hey, hey, Russian vids, Russian vids. Uh, yeah, with right. your with your vast array of knowledge of the heliocentric model, can you please tell me uh, what does uh, uh, does the twenty six thousand year precession mean anything to you? Um, I mean, is, if it's coming from science, from the science books, it's it's probably nothing but nonsense and garbage. Uh, yeah, but 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 you but you've obviously know about it. So can you please d describe to me what this uh, twenty six thousand year precession means? Uh, there's supposedly some change uh, change taking place every 2,600 years. You explain it, Reds. Can, can you please can you please can you please tell me All what right. that what that change is? Explain how the hyperdrive works in the Millennium Falcon. I don't, you know, <laughs> it's the same so thing. It's a bunch of nonsense. Well, the right, hyperdrive so um, works by compressing the space in front of it and expanding the space behind using antimatter reactions to. Sorry, my, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let me ask you the guys. Is this something oh. uh, 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 real you can quantify, or is this just like Absolutely. metaphysics? So, it's just a bunch of nonsense. Oh, here's, here's the deal. Um, long before we had any other way of uh, navigating uh, on the sea using GPS like we do today or different uh, mechanisms, they used the stars, right? So they used sextants, which are accurate to one-tenth of an arc minute. You know what arc minute is? Yeah, I've heard it, yeah. Um, so you can use the sextant. You can spot the elevation of, of Polaris. And using the elevation of Polaris, you can get within 200 meters of your position on the Earth accurately. Now, knowing where Polaris is exactly is critical for that because it is not in the center. It is slightly off center. And it changes every year. So if you didn't know where it was and you were going into a, a bay somewhere that had rocks on the north or south side and you were getting the wrong elevate the wrong latitude 
you're going to hit those rocks. So there's very detailed books that that sailors would have that detail for every day of the year where Polaris is because it changes. So Craig, how much bring up? Can you bring up uh, number twenty, please? It changes how much does it change, McDonald? It changes enough because they have 200 meter accuracy if they're within one tenth of an arc minute. All right, so here is a book published by um, by the uh, who is it? The anyway, it's called the Nautical Almanac and Astrono Astro uh, Astronomical Ephemeris. Blah, sorry. Here is 1840. You see there it says Alpha Ursa Minor or Polaris. It is at 88 degrees, 27 minutes, 21.94 arc seconds. That's its position January 1st of that year. Now, this same book has different, um, different lists for each month of the year so that you can get it accurate. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah, McHugh, you mind if I ask something real quick? Yes. Not to, I'm not going to go on too long. Um, yeah, I understand it's in print here. You have this uh, screenshot, um, and you have it uh, boxed in. But is this observable, this movement, or is it just on basically on paper, on a blackboard, on a chalkboard? Is this something observable that if we all can this observe? wasn't accurate, ships would hit rocks. Right? It ships has to be accurate. hit rocks. Right, they they need these numbers to be accurate in order to do their navigation. So they, they got to navigate. They they got to navigate Polaris when they when they sail. You're saying, yeah. Yeah, Polaris is one of many stars. These books have, and you can see this. This is a list here of multiple different stars. You can see, um, but I chose Polaris because it's it's the one that's talked about a lot. And it's also easy to understand because it's so close to the center of the North Celestial Pole, right? So there you see it's 88 degrees, 27, just about 88 and a half degrees off of center in 1840. All right. Can you go to the next slide? So, all right, there you go. So in 1850... You can see it was 88 degrees 30, so it moved three arc minutes. Now you can see all the way up to 2017, 89 degrees 20.3. So they, they listed as a decimal uh, minutes in, in decimal instead of minutes in seconds with the newer the newer numbers there. So you see it's been yeah. moving closer to the celestial pole over the centuries here. You can go back farther. There are there are things farther back. Um, but you can see it moves. So your question, how come every year the, the, the stars are never moving? Well, they are moving. And you can look in all of these books. You can get them. You can look online. There's scans. You could even go to the library and, and, and look at them. There's well, Michigan has a giant yeah. collection of them. University of California has a collection of them as well. And you can look at them with your own eyes. And you can see these ancient books that people had to have accurate or they would crash into rocks or they would get lost at sea. They're moving. Well, the stars McToon, are moving. They have to be accurate. McToon, uh, you know, this is the thing is we have to, we have to be, be perfectly clear. I'm not, I'm not again, dis disputing movement. It's the way it's moving and, and how it could be viewed with the heliocentric model. Again, with the, uh, the supposed orbit um, of, of the earth around the sun, where it doesn't add up where uh, the, the two nights of, of winter and summer, it doesn't equate to, seeing uh uh the, the stars that we see um all the time so that that's what i'm getting at and as far as your numbers you're throwing at um the, the difference doesn't seem so, so drastic and, and, and again it has to here's the thing is you say you, you say these sailors um these people with these ships they were they were crashing to uh say uh land or ice i i don't think um a lot of these these, these uh, uh, people are looking at these coordinates. They're more, it's not like a pilot in the sky. They're more or less looking at what's happening in real time right in front of them. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be, let me look at this freaking chart. <laughs> they're going to be looking at what's right in front of them as far so as what they're going to do. Did they publish these charts at all then? Why did, why did they go to so much effort to publish these charts? Well, to, to, to defend their, uh, you know, it's like this. And I said it a million times. And not, not to get too far off topic. 
what I said is, you know, this is the foundation of this world. This this ball Earth, this this spinning a rocket water ball traveling through uh, en endless space. You know, this is the foundation of the lies. Now, with that lie, you have to, you know, uh, follow up with more lies, continuous so, lies to back up is, that foundation. The problem is, you're saying this is a lie. You need now to make make uh, evidence for that claim. No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that that Polaris might doesn't have like again. I I I said it. You know that our stars are rotating, like the wheel in the sky keeps on turning, like the song by Journey. The, you know we're stationary. The sun and the moon and stars are moving. There might be Polaris, even though uh, over the North Pole with the spin, it could be moving slightly. I, I would not uh, uh, disagree with that. It's a very slight okay, so movement. Now here's here's the thing, Polaris isn't the only one moving. They're all moving. They all are. I know that. They're all moving. Hold on. They're I all moving that. in different directions. They're not just um, all moving together. They're all moving in their own way, in their own direction. And you can see in this chart that's on the screen right now. Um, while you're looking up that chart, I'll just say this. That we should, know, we, each of them moves at a different see. rate in a ahead, different direction every year. Well, with, again, with this, you know, I'm just telling you, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna say it one last time, with this um, tremendous amount of, of, of velocity, with the, with the, uh, I'm don't even, I'm forget about the spin, I'm just talking about the orbit and the speed, and we see the same freaking stars. You're telling me, the stars you know, are for example, I hold on, hold on, point. hold on, McTune, hold You're on, saying that the stars don't move and yet they move. Hold on, hold on, no, there's, uh, listen, a little off's a lot off. You have to understand this. I am admitting, and I stated, we are stationary. The sun, the moon, the stars circle above like a clock. It's clockwork. All right. Okay, That's guys. why we see the same freaking, uh, you know, stars, uh, the same constellations. It cannot happen on, on a freaking uh, a rocket water ball that's orbiting the sun at 70,000 miles an hour while moving at half a million miles an hour. It does not equate. Does it make sense? Here, this is what I want to get to. And I told you guys, I was, okay. Craig, I told you I was going to yeah. take a different avenue today. And I'm going to go with, with the concept I, I've mentioned many times with Freemasonry and duality. And I want to show with these science fiction movies, not just one connection, there's going to be several, where they're basically – Can we stick to evidence, the programming, please? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I don't give a damn about your imaginary programming. Hold on, program, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Within all the programming, they're going to give us a little, a little bit of Easter eggs of truth. Let's go. Let's go here, Craig. The first one here, and it's all you got to hear me out are here. You, are you running away from this? I've shown I'm you evidence. Getting to something. It's going to relate. Hold on. Finish. It's Please. going to hang relate. On. I, I, hang on. Hang on. A MC Tune uh, and Russia Biz. Let me, let me say. Let me say this. And Craig, yeah. I also want you to listen to this as well. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and let Russian Vid share what he has to what he has to share. I swear to fuck though. If yeah. this is going into some numerology, no. you know, planned programming, no, 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 fucking no. not actual evidence bullshit, I will shut that shit down very quickly. So go ahead. That's, it's All not right. going to numer numerology. I haven't brought up and freaking numerology because I know you cry every time the, I bring it up. We're going to make no, this the, the, the last argument, um, and then Exa you guys exactly. Can go have your final but, thoughts. but Craig, just 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 keep just keep it just keep an ear, yep. ear open because I will shut this shit down if it goes where I think it's going. And by the oh. way, just just to be clear, I didn't cry when numerology was there. I was actually <laughs> thankful because I was able to use numerology to prove that Simpson, you had a yeah. sexual relationship with OJ Simpson. Yes. So yeah. Please go on. Yeah. That's the same way you you come up with the freaking ball earth. It's all you, through you, numbers. You, by the yeah, way, right. you were you, you were on the bottom. All right, fight. Go ahead. Right, yeah. uh, right. Russian vids. Where do you want me to go in your video? Okay, thanks, Craig. If you go to one oh eight of the video, now this is a different angle I'm taking, and I, I'd appreciate if I'm not interrupted and I could just get through these images, and then you guys can have a rebuttal all you want. But I want to just show there's a pattern. Okay, if you can go to one oh eight in the uh, the video itself. I'd appreciate it. There we go. Now, I talk about in my channel how basically, you know, everything that's pushed out, entertainment is not really entertainment. It's first it's programming and, and it disguised as entertainment. Now, this is a movie, a TV movie. It was a series from the 80s. It was called V for Visitors. And Watch it's all programming. Oh, hold on. I'm trying the to The remake speak in 2012 here. was much better. Yeah, hold on, hold on. So, the foundation of this is alien invaders coming from another world. I'm going to wrap it up. I mean, not wrap it up. I'm going to be very quick on this. 
alien invasion coming the other, from another world. They, they come to Earth to save humanity, giving them vaccines that uh, that's a cure for cancer. Or aliens from other worlds. They're supposedly reptilians. Or they're disguised as hu human-looking people. But okay, their skin, shut this shit on. down. This, quite frankly, no, no. This absolutely has nothing to do with yes, actual evidence right. that was brought up. Out, You're not going to hear me out, but I'm getting right to it. You're bringing hold up on. aliens and vaccines I'm from a science a fiction show. Right now. Reds, hold on. Just hold tight. You're, you're going down conspiracy way? rabbit holes. Okay, Absolutely. Reds, hold on, Reds. Hold on. You see the I freaking... Would... Reds. I said, no, I said I was going to shut this shit down hard if you were going to go down this road, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Craig, take okay, this shit Okay, I'm off. not going to freaking appear on your podcast again, Craig. If this is going to happen... I, 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 I work with you, Craig. We're, we're going to, we're if going Reds going to shut this down, I'm done. You to stick to actual evidence and not conspiratorial I'm bullshit. I'm trying to make a point. Uh, it, listen, your, this is what I said, Craig. Your point, is, Craig. Your point, your point has absolutely nothing, Red, nothing going. Red, nothing this whatsoever. Ticks me yeah. off, Craig. This is your channel. Please, please. I'm well, asking you. Red, 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 Red is moderating here. Like, um, is there a point to this that can be refuted yes, with evidence? I, All right, evidence. Right. Let's let's just show. let's just humor him for two minutes. All right. Let, Thank if, you, Craig. If, if, I if, he, has, if he hasn't Craig. got to the point it. in two minutes, then we will shut it down. Okay. That's fair enough, Craig. I appreciate that very much. Okay, I'm going right. to run through this real quick. And so, uh, it's this the last image chance. here, this is the supreme leader of this alien. These alien invaders. Her name is Diana. What does she have underneath her? Oh, she's holding. There's a four corners. There's a dome. With the sun and the moon, you see it making a circular motion. Now go to the next frame, okay? Go to 112. A little bit of a close-up. I want to run through this because there's many, many others that I want to show within the two minutes. Okay, this is the biblical firmament. Now you see the sun and the moon. Again, you see the circular path the sun and the moon are making. Now let's go to the next one. Do you guys now one. see why I wanted to shut this shit down? Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Go to the freaking next one. You're going to get a clear image. Craig, if you can go to 118, please. You see that? Okay, so you do know that that is actually a star dome, right? That, that literally is the freaking constellation with the sun and the moon and making a circular motion. Okay? Uh, yeah. Now... Uh Let's let's move on real quick. Not much time. Let's go to one twenty two. One twenty two. That's one twenty two. I'm guessing you mean after that. Safe. The same concept. Okay, that's what I wanted to get to. One twenty two. There was nothing there at one twenty two. Okay. Right, okay. Right, let's, right, let's, so let's, is let's, is is that all of your the things are going to be the same? Um, no. As no, the, there, there's a few more I want to show. No, no, we're we're, right. we're 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 done. We're done here okay, actually because none of that was guys. evidence for anything. Take care, take care, guys. Hey, 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 you, bit, see, bit, you see had later. You, okay. you, you had you had to do this, like, but the, the, your point to that was that Hollywood is trying to program people, right? That that that, that was your whole point. Yeah, and basically so, he failed miserably he, at that. So he's, he's gone I want to go ahead. I want to go ahead and uh, congratulate MC Toon on a flawless victory. Thank you very yeah, much. Very much so. Uh, I, I I would I'm say that wondering. it was. What is the elevation of the sun? Exactly. <laughs> I, I would say it was a challenge for you, but uh, yeah, that would be a, a stretch to say the least. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was so, ba so, bas so basically, <laughs> um, aliens in science fiction movies. Um, that's proof evidence things yeah it, it would appear so um i was hoping russian vids would stick around because um you know the, the launch has happened and his friend uh, did he do the footage i don't think so right so um we need to uh get russian vids on to your channel or non-sec and talk to him about what observations he actually saw because remember he said he'd shut his channel down well he said that and we all know that he's not going to because now uh, he said that he had a trusted friend um, that was in Florida that was going to go film it. If uh, this trust friend actually went to go and film it, guess who doesn't have a friend anymore? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah, MC Toon, well done. Um, you presented evidence. You refuted his claims. Uh, he, for, Fair play to Russian vids. He actually came with a video prepared with notes and timestamps and everything even though most of the arguments were 
completely fucking ridiculous. Um, he, he did at least attempt to come with a prepared debate, which, you know, I'll, I'll give him some respect for. Uh, obviously, he has rage quit, so we can still call him hashtag bitch made. Uh, mm-hmm. but <laughs> I think we, we'll go ahead and read the super chats right now, because there was a fair few that came in. Uh, so if you just want to spare me for two minutes. Um, before we do that, um, MC Tune, any final thoughts on that? Um, well, you know, it, it was good. Um, and I appreciate that Russian vids came on and, um, um, I did run, uh, just, you know, I ran uh, his, his name through the ancient Tunarian, uh, Jamal, uh, Jamal, what, what do they call it? Gematria. Yeah. Ancient Tunarian Gematria. It's 33, by the way. Um, I don't know if he chose that on purpose or not, but um yeah thank you uh for joining um russian vids it was good and um as expected i showed a lot of evidence you waved it off and then showed some tv show stuff so yeah thank you for that well done reds any final thoughts on what happened uh yeah can you get back to me with an update on what your trusted source actually captured when it came to the spacex launch and landing i would very much love to hear what what they captured and what you thought of it yeah, yeah, so uh, if you want to uh, hit me back on the Twitters or on the YouTubes, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. Because um, he, remember what he said, if his trusted source doesn't give him the footage that he finds sufficient, he will go to the next launch. Exactly. So, yeah. And and he also he also said that if he sees it um, for himself, that he will close his channel. And and I think something needs to be uh, needs to be addressed here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because MC Toon did bring up him closing his channel, and you know, you, you we just don't want him on here. The answer is yes, we don't want him on here. But I think he's confused as to the reason we don't want him on here. Uh, it's 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 basically to stop the spewing of complete, unfiltered bullshit. We have enough of that as it is. I can't type in Apollo documentary in YouTube without some conspirator nonsense coming up in the search results. The less of that we have and the more actual sciencey stuff we have, the better. So Russian vids, you can continue to be wrong on your own time, but if we can get your sorry ass off the internet, that 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 is that, that would be great. That would be absolutely fucking great, which is why I'm, you know, working towards that goal of having you close down your channel and never bugging us with your nonsense ever the fuck again. You could be yeah. wrong in your own time, but please, please, please shut the fuck up while doing it. Yeah, it's one of my um, aims at the moment is to make Russian vids follow through with what he said about shutting his channel down. But anyway, super chats. So we have 10 US dollars from Tig Logan 16, um, three globe births, thank you. And then another $10 with some laughy faces around Russian vids. Yeah, that's about all he's good for laughing at really. Uh, one dollar from Brian Shannon. Thank you very much. One ninety nine from Sparky Chapstick. It says, for example, one. If he says, for example, one more goddamn time. Yeah, well, uh, at least he didn't break out the bottom line. The amount of times he has done before. Uh, another ten dollars from Tig Logan sixteen. RV's Dunning Kruger laugh for the win. Yeah, five pounds from the casual spaceman. Big congrats to Creaky Blinder for getting five K subs. Yes, well done, Creaky Blinder. If you guys aren't subscribed to the Creaky Blinder, um. Uh, you might not be able to understand anything he says because he's Welsh, but you should probably subscribe to him anyway. Five Canadian dollars um, from Ashtray Jadlow. Uh, our view's next argument will be that balloons for birthday parties are to program kids about the shape of the earth. Dude needs help. <laughs> Five US dollars from Tim Hill. By far the dumb- dumbest opposition ever on any debate anywhere, ever. Yep. Uh, Five dollars from Space Comma Comma. RV is shocked. 10 euros from Forever Learning. Keep up this important work, please. Yeah, well, um, it is important work, and Reds has been doing it for a long time. I'm just following in his footsteps. Uh, 199 US dollars from Jen Morgan. Russian vids is clearly by his behavior a coward. Well, he did just run away. 5 US dollars from Blair Sidowitz. Show him the 1946 footage from the V2 rocket. It's on YouTube. Yeah, he'd say it's um, fake. 499 dollars... Yeah. <laughs> from Paul M. L- Lockitz, you can't educate these guys. They think a predictive model is where be- Beetlejuice lives. There isn't much you can do with that. <laughs> uh, 10 US dollars from the logical hillbilly. Russian bids. The difference is MC Toon can look up the diameter of the earth as well as measure it himself. You can't claim the same as to the height of your son. Yeah, you never did get answer to that, did you? No. No, nothing. 
Two dollars. Two dollars from Depooch, thank you. Five US dollars from Tim Hill. This guy needs his own idiot awards. Seriously, just whoa. Five dollars from uh designed uh ONQ one. I've never been in the remedial science class. Are RB's questions an attitude typical remedial science class? Go get Google Sky. Yeah, I think RB needs to be added to the remedial science class. Uh five dollars from Tim Hill. His answer is always the equivalent of nuh uh, you big poo poo head. <laughs> um, $1 from Alexis B, thank you. $5 from Tim Hill, your first uh, your first ever instance of journey as proof of flat earth, right here today, folks. <laughs> uh, $4.99 US dollars from Jen Morgan. RV, you are the most stupid person on earth. You are ill, get help or just go away. You are infecting the species with your disease and God hates you. Oh, wow. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 10 US dollars from Tim Hill. And now we have science fiction as proof of flat earth. This guy is by far the dumbest individual I've ever seen. We're talking about cabbage brain here. Um, <laughs> 666 New Zealand dollars. Hail Satan from Boaty McBoatface. A pattern, huh? What have you got against fractals? And last one, $5 from William Sines. Don't go away, mad Russian vids. Just go the fuck away. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was I like that one. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching tonight. It has been fun. Um, I'll be back in a few days with another episode of Flurfs Are Idiots. MC Toon, you got anything coming up on your channel? Um, I'm working on an interview with the guy that's building the rocket for Mad Mike Hughes, who I Ooh. interviewed and uh, put out last week. So if you haven't seen the interview with Mad Mike Hughes, watch that. He's the flat earther that's going to launch himself to space. Um, and so the guy that's building his rocket is... Uh, coming up hopefully that's that's pretty awesome well done for getting that yeah you've been doing some good work with um interviews i've enjoying your coffee uh, with flat earthers i couldn't stay that calm so um well done for doing that <laughs> uh reds any final words before we shut up uh yes i got two and want to address someone in the live chat that isn't russian vids um so i'm going to be uh working on upgrading my rig a few people have mentioned an interest in me live streaming these rocket launches and so i'm going to start working towards that goal i think and i'm just going to leave the auto tracking stuff to astronomy live uh, that way we can cover both aspects of this uh, launch and landing having a great edited video and then having a great live stream video uh, that way no one can claim it's cgi because how the fuck would you actually do that in real time while on location and uh, also, uh, I'm not going to give any context to this. I'm just going to say it outright. Hannah Anderson, I never banned you from my live chat. Someone else did. I would appreciate it if you stopped telling people that I banned you. And to fix that, I have unbanned you. So there you go. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to Fight the Flat Earth. Please subscribe to MC Tune. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the Flat Earth.